Adam Richmond is with us, Man vs. Food on the Travel Channel. He's doing a special presentation tonight at the Englert Theater. Uh, it's not an eating demonstration. You're going to go and you're going to laugh and you're going to learn. And you're going to have a good evening. Uh, there are tickets still available. You can go to englert.org or you can go to the box office. And uh, you you want to meet Adam? This is the best way to do it. Other than calling in right now, we got a caller right here. Adam, got a call. Uh, someone wanted to know your favorite place to eat and the most interesting. Favorite so place far. to eat. Um it's always hard, you know, when it comes to the restaurants because, uh, you know, I've become friends with so many of these managers. It's hard to pick one and it's hard to compare a seafood place to a burger place mm-hmm. to right. a sure. fried chicken joint. Um, so, my, obviously, my, my the honest answer is always going to be my mom's kitchen. Yeah. Just, my mom just breaking it off. You know, <laughs> yeah. but you know, also I have to say, um, there was a restaurant we did in season one in Minneapolis where I ate a pig with Andrew Zimmern. Um, hey, called... that guy freaks me out. <laughs> you know, he's, he's amazing. It's, 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 uh, interesting, you know, that, you know, his calling card has been sort of, you know, eating bugs and testicles, but, um, right. oh, and that was before the show. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but you know, the thing is, He's he's so smart and he's so erudite and he's such a personable guy, um, and he's from uh, Minneapolis. He actually lives outside of there, and I used to live there too. And he took me to this place called Brasa Premium Rotisserie. It's on North Hennepin in Minneapolis, and um, I've been back there uh, a couple times since, and it's just remarkable. It's mm-hmm. uh, some of the best meats and and uh, really affordable. And uh, the chef is a two time James Beard Award nominee, and you'd wow. never know it. The dude goes rolls in and. T-shirts and jeans, and he brings his kids, and mm-hmm. it's a former gas station that they've renovated, and it's really accessible. Cool. It sounds very cool. It's awesome. Is there a place in the Midwest that has got, like, the hottest wings or anything that you've been to around here, or the hottest food challenge or biggest something or another that you can talk about? Wow. I mean, because I, I love spending time in the Midwest. I, I've spent some time, uh, significant amounts of time living in Minneapolis and Cleveland and St. Louis and in Louisville, which is, I guess, what they call it, Kentuckiana. I don't know. We used to jokingly call it Indie Yucky. But, uh, but, uh, Scoring it well. You are. You very much. Um, well, I, I remember, um, ch- challenge-wise, I mean, Minneapolis certainly has the meter-long bratwurst, which mm-hmm. we did. But uh, some of my favorite foods from Minneapolis, uh, there's a street in Minneapolis called uh, Nicolette, yep. which is also called Eat Street. And they have a restaurant there called Kwong's Deli. It's like a Vietnamese restaurant, which has these sweet potato shrimp sort of fried mm. puffs that are just off the chain. There's a place called the Isles Buns, um, which is just the best cinnamon rolls I've ever, ever encountered. Um, there's just there's just remarkable, remarkable food yeah. uh, in in that city in St. Louis. Emo's Pizza in St. Louis um, has the distinction of being the only pizza I've known that makes every bottle of wine better. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I know that they have a big challenger. They have a pizza challenge called the Pointersaurus, which I, don't, I think may have only been beaten twice in its entire history. Um, I, do you ever hit a wall where you're like, I don't even, I, I, I'm having trouble coming up with something to say about this place or about this food or, I, you know, I finding a new way to describe something? Yeah, I mean, it's not so much that I run up against a wall. I mean, you, you want to keep it different. I mean, you, you go to so many different burger places or whatever. But I think that's kind of the thing is that if I, if I try to, Think about it like as like the host of a show generating content. That's kind of when it sucks. Yeah. Then I think that it's really only good when I'm just really speaking from from the, you know shooting from the hip and speaking from the heart. And I think that um, if the food is actually really something very evocative to me, it's it's just going to flow. And if not, then you speak to that food within the context of that city, and you just got to let it be your guide. You know, crab cakes in Baltimore, cheesesteak in Philly. Right, right. We have a couple of questions here for you. Yeah. Hi there. Are you there? You have a question You're for Adam? Adam? Go ahead and ask him a question. Hey, what's I up? do. I was gonna. I was gonna ask. Uh, what kind of working out do you do? I ended up going to Hash Hash Go Go and having that uh, Friday or the uh, fried chicken eggs Benedict, and I felt like I needed to run about six marathons just to lose that. So. <laughs> yeah, no, that it's it's delicious. But yeah, I remember watching Jim Reese, the owner there, make it, and I was like, "Wait, you're eating cheese?" <laughs> and you're in gravy <laughs> and pasta, like. But uh, you know, honestly, I do bare minimum an hour of cardio every single day. And on the road, I tend to do two-a-day workouts because uh, just the challenges in between. Um, I go pretty much vegetarian or, or very close to it when I'm not shooting. And it's just kind of like checks and balances. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, good question. Lots Thanks of water, much. too. Lots of water. What's tonight yeah. going to actually Water's look like on, on stage? What, what will your show look like tonight? Okay, so it's going to be me. I think the Angler has also sold a couple seats actually on stage. And and the show's basically going to be divided into three parts. That's just the easiest way for me to describe it. The first is just sort of going to be me talking about like my sort of food philosophy, as it were. But just it's about us and the very common language of food that we all speak Mm -hmm. and like our own personal food stories. Mm -hmm. Um, The middle is actually going to be like a real down and dirty cooking demo. And a lot of times, yep. And a lot of times when I see cooking demos, either on TV or live, you know, there's like cooking implements that I see that are kind of unaffordable or, you know, very fancy or thing. And nah, Mm -hmm. we're going to go like really, really very bare minimal and just show how you could elevate a very simple thing. And, you know, again, we're in Iowa and some of the freshest produce in this country. I mean, right now you have green leafy vegetables in season here, herbs in season here. The garlic from here is off the chain. Corn's coming up right now. I mean, there's just so much amazing stuff here that, you know, I want everyone to be able to like claim ownership of it. And then I'm going to do a Q and a and hang out and talk to everybody for a little bit. Yeah. And there's a can drive tonight actually, which is, uh, oh, good. I, I, which is something I'm very, very passionate about. So, so okay. bring a can of food while you, when you, if you can, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I have another question here for you, if you don't mind. Not at all. Hi there. Hi, I have a question. Um, how do you prepare eating-wise for the challenges? Do you starve yourself all day, or do you, like, stretch your stomach out? Um, it depends upon the challenge. So I guess, like, quantity challenge is what you were talking about. Right. Um, a lot of it is I, I do tend to go pretty light. I do um, cleanses, both before and after. Uh, the big challenges Tons and tons of uh, workouts. I do, um, in specific, I do lots of leg and back workouts before quantity challenges because they're the biggest muscle group, so they create the biggest metabolic rev. Um, I do sprints and stuff. Um, and then um, general, and I drink, again, water. Like That's kind of how I guess you might say I stretch out my stomach. And I learned a trick from Joey Chestnut when we did the San Jose episode. He said he goes into his big challenges as hungry and as dehydrated as he can be, mm. uh, which is, of course, the greatest way to make seven hours of television on your feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No kidding. Uh, but then I do that. And then spicy challenges, um, I tend to coat my stomach with some kind of antacid or I'll use something like Zantac uh, to sort of abate the acid that's in my stomach and i learned a trick in boise that if you eat bananas it not only helps in your stomach but it helps later later Uh (laughs) (laughs) uh-huh the hot stuff is is always amazing to me by the way there was was it an indian restaurant there was something that was like the hottest thing there is it was some kind of like weapons grade (laughs) <laughs> yeah, there's uh, the ghost chili is the hottest pepper on the planet. It's called ghost Naga, chili. the ghost chili, okay. Naga Boot Holokia. And uh, the way that they measure spice or gradient of spice is something called the Scoville unit. Mm-hmm. And it's how many units of water it takes to wash away any trace of heat in a pepper. And so um, jalapeno hovers like in the 2,500 to 5,000 range. The, um, you know, Thai chili can maybe like 150,000. Habanero, 300,000. The ghost chili is a million. Oh, oh my God. Million. It is. They actually tie it to fences in India to keep wild elephants away. Hey. So clearly. <laughs> so why wouldn't you possess, want to eat it? Right. So clearly I possess a resolve uh, less, <laughs> greater than that of an elephant, and, uh, which is, which is as long as I keep my silhouette not looking like that, I'm okay. And so I, I tried that in some wings in Sarasota that almost killed me. That was the mystery challenge God. in the season premiere in San Antonio. On the Four Horsemen burger, which had three other peppers plus three whole ghost chilies. Oh, my God. And uh, funny story really quickly about that. So the best thing. So after that challenge, I win the challenge. I'm surprisingly good. I sign autographs. I take pictures. People of San Antonio are phenomenal people. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Back to the hotel. People in the hotel left me a little bottle of milk on some ice and some preparation H and some Sudoku and stuff. They're very sweet. (laughs) So, okay, my sound guy and I go to get a gift for his wife and his little girl. Our hotel's a couple blocks away from the Alamo. All of a sudden, it feels like a donkey's kicked me inside my stomach, but from the inside. Oh. My knees just go. I'm like, oh. So I'm like, oh, I, I, like, I have to go back to the hotel and lay down. And so I saw a cab, and I was walking towards it. And I remember I'm holding my stomach doubled over and pulling myself along the wall of the Alamo. And I just had oh. to start laughing. Just these people seeing, like the host of Ben vs. Food, <laughs> yes. doubled over, holding his gut, staggering out of the Alamo. At the Alamo. It right. was just so perfect. It was just like, yes. It's a yes. different kind of courage, really. It was, really. Yeah, exactly. And I will always remember the Alamo. Oh, 